Hi and welcome to the Yarn Not Alone video for our crib size blankets using our knitting machine. Uh, my name is Cloda and I am one of the volunteers with the group. I'm just about to start making another tube blanket so I thought I would record some of the highlights uh, to help anyone else along who uh, would like to make the blankets. This particular blanket we are making on the 22 needle machine. Uh, you can make it on the bigger machines, you'll just need to adjust for sizing. Obviously you're not going to need as many panels because the larger machines have a wider tube. When I say tube, basically what this pattern does is we create long tubes and then we seam them together which gives us the blanket and uh, in this case this blanket was just coming up a little short so the next blanket I do uh, I'm going to increase from six tubes to seven tubes so that's the one that I'm going to be making today and trialing and I thought we'd uh, just record a few bits and um, see if we can help anyone who's got any questions so for this project you can use any types any colors of yarns uh, what you will end up having is seven panels these panels are going to end up being 140 rows of work, five waist yarn and five waist yarn. I'll explain that one in a minute. Um, so you can decide. We were uh, generously donated some uh, yarn from a lady uh, who had finished some projects and had these bits left over. So we have rewound these into small balls and uh, then we can mix and match and make striped tubes. And I'm going to mix those striped tubes in with a uh, double knit uh, cream uh, yarn. So most um, worsted weight yarns will work with the 22 needle. Uh, so also with this project, if you're uh, sewing along, you're going to need a pair of scissors, uh, a tape measure, your knitting machine and your yarn and a darning needle. Ultimately, this is what your pattern will look like. You'll have seven rows. I'm going to alternate between a solid color and doing some multicolors. So let's get started. When making the tubes for this blanket, it's best to start and finish with what we call waste yarn. Now waste yarn is just any color that you will do about five rows of. Here I've got a, actually only about three rows, but five rows means that it's not gonna fall out on you. That one there is four rows. Um, and I save the small bits. So actually, even when I take the scrap yarn or the waste yarn off a blanket when I'm finished, I roll it back up again so that I can reuse it. Putting waste yarn on at the beginning of a project and the end of the project, the tube, will allow us to be able to close the tubes um, in a lot easier way. So you will see that when we get to the end of the video and we're putting them together. So I'm going to start by casting onto this machine with my waste yarn. I have um, a small weight that I have made with a clasp I had from an old handbag and a clip. And I'm just going to attach that to the yarn to give it some weight as we cast on. So with casting on, we have another video on that in the YouTube channel. You can go and have a look at that. But you're basically going to miss every second peg. So I've caught it on this peg. I'm not going to catch it on the next one. Now it's caught on that one, not on this one. It's caught on that one, not on this one. You might find it's easier to use uh, a crochet hook to lift it over the peg that you don't want to knit. Just grab it before it goes under. It just makes it a lot easier. Okay. 
I'm back to the beginning now and the first peg was the one that I started with the knit on. So now I'm going to <clears throat> take my yarn. I like to hold my yarn to give it some tension and hold my machine. And the first one when you're going around, go slowly. You'll hear a few little clinks. They shouldn't be big pops. Little clinks as you're going around because the first, uh, first round or two can be a little tight. That's number one. That's number two. You'll see that I noted my starter peg with some nail varnish on either side. It helps me to count. That's number three. That's number four. And that's number five. So I have now knit five rows. It really doesn't matter with the waste yarn. I'm actually going to go one extra row because I have enough yarn here to do that. And now I'm just going to take that yarn through. See I had a bit more on there. And just pop that into the middle and we're going to join our first yarn. So the first yarn I am using is this uh, lovely gold. And I'm going to thread that through and join it. And of course I, there it is, there's my darning needle. So to take that through. I'm going to take this through to the bottom tension as you can see here and then I like to drop this on the floor to give it a bit more tension so what I do is I put it in my yarn bowl this was made for, for me by my lovely friend but a plastic bowl anything will do just something to keep the yarn off the floor I'm gonna pop that on the floor and to keep these two pieces together I'm going to get that lovely handy dandy weight and I'm going to take the two yarns you can see that they're in the same peg area I'm just going to take those two yarns and weight them down and now I'm going to start on row one so that's my first row now you might be lucky to have a different machine that has a counter such as my Addy. I have an Addy uh, and it has a counter which makes life so much easier. On these um, machines which uh, were, are uh, cost a lot less um, but in general they're marketed as a toy and they don't, some of them have counters, some don't. This particular one, the girls creator, it does not have a counter. So what that means is that I'm going to have to keep count and what I like to do is keep count and what you can do a little trick here is get some stitch markers and mark every 10th row or 15th row whatever you'd like to do so I'm going to grab some stitch markers I'm going to go 10 rows show you what I mean and uh, we'll change yarns once and then I'll see you back nine so I'm coming up to my 10th row now so this is 10 for me I'm going to go one more row to 11. Now I'm just going to take a stitch marker and put it in the row before, which I know was my 10th row. Okay. So this is 11. Oops. Sorry. 12. 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I'm going to stop there, put my next stitch marker in because I've, I know it was just the row before. So I know that that was row 20. So you can continue to do this and uh, as you change yarns, as you do things, just it will help you to be able to count those rows. Now I'm going to uh, go on for just a little bit more with this yarn and then I will change colours. 
I'm about to change colour here, but I did want to show you just in case you lost your way, you got distracted. Don't worry, you can always count your rows. If you have a look here, I'll bring this up to the camera a little bit more. You can have a look here. I know that was row 20, that's row 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So I'm at row 26 at the moment. I'm going to change the yarn. You can choose to change it in the same spot every time or a different spot. I'm going to, so I know that that's at row 27. I bring my yarn through here. All I did was cut that off and I'm going to start a new colour. So I will thread that new colour through. This is my new colour. Okay, now earlier when we joined the waist yarn down here, we didn't tie this at all. Okay, this time we will give it a little tie after a couple of rows. So, first of all, put your weight on, that will give your yarn some weight. It helps when um, to keep the tension, and tension is very important. I'm dropping that yarn down into my yarn bowl. And I am at 27. Twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one. I'm going to pop in another stitch marker on the row before. Now, with these two yarns, here's a trick. I don't know if it's a trick or a tip, but you can knot those now together but what happens is if you knot them you can you can create quite a, a, a tight tension on them so ideally what you can do is leave them a little bit loose and when we finish this tube we'll actually come back and knot them when they're lying flat on the table but what I have done is just done a single um, thread over to keep those threads together so continue on this now, use whatever colours you want in whatever combination you want until you get to 140 rows. So when you get to 140 rows, I'll see you back here. You can see so far I've done 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 rows and a bit. Um, I just wanted to uh, say to you that again to keep the tension and the same consistency once you get a little tail, give it a twirl and let the yarn actually sit on top. What that does is it actually gives these stitches some tension and uh, it, you end up getting a nicer knit when you've got equal tension, tension around. So you can see I just changed colours here. I didn't do a double knot, it's just a single knot and I'm continuing on to get to my 140 rows. Also, um, if you have this size machine, um, and if you are able to somehow anchor it down, uh, that's a great thing to do. If not, I usually just hold the yarn through my fingers like this, hold on to the machine, and then keep knitting. It just allows me to give that a bit of control. I'm just marking my stitch here, I just thought I'd show you if you can't quite get your stitch marker around the stitch just use your needle to lift the stitch up a little bit and then put your marker in I'm at 140 rows now so my work is complete now I'm going to attach a little bit of scrap yarn to finish up off the project this scrap yarn we can remove and reuse again so it's in the same way, adding um, like you were just changing colours. And for the scrap yarn, if you can do like three minimum, five rows is probably better. That's one. Oops. Two. Three. 
I've just got a little bit more to go for. Okay. Now, with your scrap yarn, you're going to want to have enough yarn left to take this off the machine, to cast off. This is just about the right amount. So, because I'm still this far away from my other, um, from my starting peg, I'm actually just going to take my yarn out here. Okay. And now we're going to cast off. So, this is where my yarn is. I'm going to knit around about halfway. You can see that I'm over here. Now again we have a video on how to cast off so you can check that on our YouTube channel. But I'm going to go around now and pick up every stitch. just realized that I don't have to pick up every stitch because we're using waste yarn and we're not closing this tube so I can actually just knit this off I'm going to love it when you make a mistake when you're recording because we're using tubes I could just knit this off um, because we don't have to close the tube the thing that I find is if I take, if I cast off using this drawstring method, it actually leaves the tubes, they don't, I don't run the risk of them unraveling um, as quick. So I just like to cast off using the needle. I'm going to continue to do this and I will see you back once we get to I have finished my 140 rows and I've just taken this off the knitting machine. I can now go back and count my stitches. I have my stitch markers so I can go by those 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130 and the extra 10. So I've done 140. Now, just, okay, now that I have this off the loom, I can actually close these, the, the joins. Now, if I tighten like that, it actually will pull in the yarn. So what I want to do is give it a little stretch. Actually, what you can do is stretch all of your work first. Okay, give it a stretch always and you should do that every time you take work off the knitting machine and now uh, we'll have a look at how to tie these so as you can see we did a, a single knot I'm just going to go back now and lay this down on the bench and just go back and tighten that but not pull so that I'm pulling the yarns I like to do it uh, three knots just to make sure that they are very secure so you can see the first one is soft I'm not going in to create any hard knots there's three so what you want to do is tidy up your ends and According to our pattern, you will need to make seven tubes in whatever variation you want, whether it's solid colors, um, uh, multicolors like this, or you might even use a variegated yarn, whatever suits you. When you have finished making seven tubes with 140 rows plus the waste yarn on either end, that was our waste yarn for that end, that's the waste yarn for that end, then Come back and we will discuss how we're actually going to put those together.